our morning rounds, new concerns about the flu season. U.S. health officials say there are signs that this may be a rough winter. Confirmed flu cases at just over 7,000 are more than double what they were this time last year. The virus is now widespread in four states. The dominant strain is H3N2, which may cause more severe illness. Even more troubling, this year's flu shot is the same one used in Australia's recent flu season when it was only 10 percent effective. Australia typically sets a pattern for what we will face here. Dr. Pardis Subeti is a professor at Harvard and an infectious disease expert who heads up her own research lab. Good morning. Morning. So past flu vaccines range anywhere from 10 to 60 percent effectiveness. Mm -hmm. What do we know about this year? Um, well, so uh, that's true, you know, and on average about 40 percent effectiveness for the, the flu vaccine. We um, you had mentioned essentially that in Australia uh, they did have a poor season with only 10 percent. Uh, the, the, they had a very bad flu season, about five times as many cases in the previous year. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the vaccine was only 10 percent um, as uh, you know, effective. So it's even low for the flu. And um, with that, there's a lot of people that are susceptible. Um, and because the formulation, the vaccine that they used in Australia is the same one we're going to use this year, we expect to see something similar. So what is the challenge? Yeah. Why can't we get a more effective flu vaccine? Um, yeah, so the way that vaccines work is that they um, basically they're an inactivated or disabled version of a virus that we present to our immune system and our immune system gets to see it, to recognize it, to learn it, uh, so that if we ever get a natural uh, you know, virus infection, we're ready to respond. Uh, the problem with flu and the virus that causes flu influenza is that it changes. It's very diverse, uh, lots of different strains, and it's changing all the time. And so by the time we pick a version of the virus to make into a vaccine and put it into production, it might take six to eight months. And in that time, the virus might change. Um, and so that's an issue. And then also just in the production itself, we have to grow it up and we normally grow it up in, in, uh, in bird eggs. Um, and in that time, it also can mutate in production itself. So it sort of diverged, diverges in two directions. So I can ask this because my sure. son is not watching and he's at school. Okay. Um, <laughs> every year he cringes when we have to go get that flu shot. I tell him it's mandatory. We all go in there, my husband, myself, my yeah. son. Is it worth getting a flu shot every year if they're not this effective? Um, it's still worth getting a flu shot. I mean, I, so I believe so. Per, you know, personally, um, always get a flu shot. Uh, even 10% effective is uh, better than anything. And if we all get, uh, and a lot of it has to do with herd immunity. The more people are protected from it, the more other people will also be protected. And so, um, in fact, in a year where it's low effectiveness, it's even more important that everybody gets it affected so that we can get as much resistant and we don't allow the virus to thrive and grow and keep changing. So even though the virus is dead when you get the shot, are you more susceptible to, to getting colds and the flu in general when you, when you um, get a shot? When you get a shot, no. I mean, I think that ultimately the shot is actually giving your immune system a little test run, a practice run. So it, it should be protective across the board. And it's not only protective from getting the flu, but also the severity of the flu if you get it. So there's multiple reasons to get it no matter what. Next year is the 100th anniversary of the flu pandemic that killed at least 50 million people worldwide. I know you're concerned about a, a pandemic. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm always concerned. That's what keeps, keeps me up at night. I worked a lot on Ebola and other viruses like Lassa. And flu is at the top of the list of things we should be worried about because it's so transmissible, because it can move so quickly. Uh, it's caused three massive um, outbreaks in the 20th century, including the 1918. It caused 50 million deaths, you know, uh, a significant portion of the world's population. Uh, but the good news is um, that the same tools that we can use to to stave off seasonal flu are the same tools that we would use to stave off a pandemic uh, as well as to flu or to any virus. All right. So thank you. there's a lot of fun technologies for that. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you. Dr. Okay. Dr. Pardee Savetti very much.